Hot Springs Village Inside Out is a closer look at the greatness of Hot Springs Village, Arkansas and the surrounding areas, people, places, experiences. Hot Springs Village is one of the most beautiful places on earth. Join me, Randy Cantrell, and my co-host Dennis Simpson as we engage in weekly conversations to explore Hot Springs Village Inside Out. Today's show is brought to you by Central Arkansas's favorite radio station, KVRE. Find them on the dial at 92.9 FM. Stream them live at kvre.com. Remax of Hot Springs Village. The award-winning Remax of Hot Springs Village is the largest real estate office inside the village with over 30 full-time agents and support staff. Visit them to learn more about this beautiful place to solve your real estate needs. Call them today at 1-800-364-9007. Find them online at explorehsv.com. They are Remax of Hot Springs Village at 1-800-364-9007 or online at explorehsv.com. Ike Eisenhower State Farm. Ike and his award-winning team have been serving the insurance needs of folks all around Hot Springs Village since 1998. Ike has qualified for State Farm's President's Club, Chairman's Circle, and Hot Springs Village Insurance Agent of the Year. Call Ike Eisenhower State Farm today at 501-984-4100. That's 501-984-4100. Find them online at IkeEisenhower.net. Call them today for all your insurance needs because, like a good neighbor, Ike Eisenhower State Farm is there. This show is dedicated to Miss Wisconsin. Don't you think? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll give her that title. (laughs) Miss Wisconsin, bless her soul, and we're not picking on you, but this is a serious discussion that we need to have. I saw a post, I think it was on HSV Community, and Randy, I... Oh, my goodness, I thought of this yesterday, and I realized we miss the boat so many places. You and I, we don't live on FS, on Facebook Inside Out, Hot, Hot Springs Village Inside Out on Facebook. We don't live on it, but we're there a lot. I mean, a lot. Yeah. And we never promote it on the show. I don't promote it on the radio show. I just don't. We just assume if you listen to us, then you'd know about the the, the group, and it's, yeah. it's a group. We want to we want to yep. maintain the group and keep it clean and all that. Yep. It's a public now, group. How many did you say? Uh, we're over forty one hundred people now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I remember the day we never thought I'd get. To, we, you said let's get to three thousand, and we were around two, and I was like, whatever, like that. But now yeah, but it we took have, us a while to get there. But now we have people knocking us off, Randy, knocking us off. Yeah, that's all right. It's well, okay. Miss Wisconsin from Hot Springs Village, uh, from the Facebook page for Hot Springs Village Community, which has a lot of people, about 14,000, mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. Uh, Miss Miss Wisconsin said that when people were saying a couple of weeks ago, we need to drip the water on your faucet, she said, that's nonsense. I'm from Wisconsin. I've just moved here. We never had to drip our water faucets. Right, Randy? Yep. You know what we call it? Which is her? probably true in Wisconsin, but you probably true. And sorry, you know what you're we not call in Wisconsin anymore, Dorothy. She is now a a new plumber customer. Is what she would be, <laughs> yeah, right, Randy? Well, she could be. She probably she might is. be. She might be. Well, and, and this and is post. Go. This is post the first snow ice apocalypse of 2024. By the way, yeah. so as yeah. as we hit the record button today, it is the 23rd of January, and it's been raining all day and. But it's up to 55 or something. It's well, it's, in the, or something. it's been in the high 40s anyway all day yeah. today. So we're, we, we've come out of it, but we had a solid week. We had a solid week or more where, especially at night, single-digit temp mm-hmm. and stuff. And so, which, which is super rare, really. And uh, uh, Todd Eubank, Eubank, I think is the guy's name, one of the, the – uh, he's a former Channel, 11, Channel 7 yeah, weatherman, meteorologist. meteorologist. Uh, really great guy, but he, he, when Diane and I got off the boat in Sunday week ago, looked at the, uh, the forecast and it was, yeah, they went on a freezing. cruise, they went on a tropical cruise while the rest of us were sitting here shivering and suffering. I'm sorry about the timing people. We would have been here with you to suffer. No, you wouldn't. Okay. So no, I wouldn't no. yeah. So we got off the boat Sunday morning and looked at the weather map and it was beginning to f- put freezing rain down. It wasn't yet in the village, but I thought, 
I can't get to Texarkana or Shreveport before it's a mess. New so, Orleans looks know, pretty good. Let's just stay in New Orleans for yeah. 62 degrees and a little weather. For We kind of got snowed out. But all that said, Todd was saying before the snow apocalypse hit, it would be 101 hours until we were above freezing. And you mm -hmm. say, well, so what, what does that matter? Because people, I'm giving you the five mile high view. If you've not been to the village and we know there's a lot of listeners and viewers that haven't, if you've not been here, it is rare, rare that we go two days, much less four days without being above freezing. Right, Randy? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you made a good point, construction differences and all that between Wisconsin I've never lived in Wisconsin. In fact, I, I heard, I we'll give a shout out to Ray Shaw. Ray Shaw is in the Pacific Northwest. He's a, he's a super fan of the show. Really? Um, yep. He loves, loves the podcast and he messaged me. He's, he's going to move here uh, from the Pacific Northwest. He has also spent some time in Alaska and he's like, some of these people wouldn't last a day in Alaska. I said, what are you talking about, Ray? I wouldn't last an hour in Alaska, but there's a reason I haven't gone to Alaska. But construction differences are are, are vastly different all over the world. So mm -hmm. we moved to north central Texas, and, and in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, people that come from more northern climes all ask the same question. Well, why don't y'all have any basements here? Well, there's a number of reasons, probably none of the least of which is foundation and shifting soil and all that is problematic. Foundation mm -hmm. repair is a big, 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 big business in North Central really? Texas. Really? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. Um, and virtually that, everything here, by the way, but so many of the houses here, I'd say 30 or 40 percent have a have a crawl, have a crawl space basement or something like that. here. Yeah. Yeah. That's not uncommon at all. It's very common. No. Right. So, you know, there's just the climate, the geography. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into various construction differences. And you were making a comment about just the R value of somebody that, well, that you let, encountered let on the, your trip. Yeah. Tell the story real quick. And anyway, uh, two things real quick I wanted to say. The, the depth at which they bury the water lines here in the village is usually 12 to 18 inches. Up north, they really have to put it, quote, under the permafrost. Well, we don't have that. Or the freeze line. We don't have a freeze line in Arkansas. Uh, yeah. I was start start startled to be on vacation and look at pictures of idiots, idiots, ninnies, you might say, walking on the ice on the lakes in the village. It ain't been cold that long, people. You know, that... Uh, well, that I did is a, see some ducks and geese walking on it, but that's Yeah, different. well, I've got fine with that. But, I mean, well, the POA pit sent <laughs> yeah. out a picture of a, of a goober actually walking on the ice, and I'm like, no, 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 not here. But but no. I go from that. Our house is, <clears throat> excuse me, positioned, you know, on the lake, but, but down behind the, the hill. And on the far right-hand side of our house is where the water main comes in, goes downstairs, comes through our side, the water heater, blah, 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 blah. Goes to the other side where Diane and I are at, where our master bedroom is. And that's the furthest point from the water spigot coming in. Yep. So if nothing else, we leave that one running because the water has to go past all of the others right. to get there, right? Yeah, makes sense. That water spigot is on an outside wall. You would never do that in Wisconsin. Your son, really? yeah. Ryan, no. No. who's a home inspector, knows the different codes that, you, you know, in northern climates, I think you mentioned that maybe around Kansas City. They just don't do that. You don't put pipes in the outside wall. No, things around Kansas City and St. Louis, to me, I mean, at that point, it's like, okay, you can, there, there's there's big differences. But there's also, there's big differences in the winter. Shoot, there's yeah, big well, differences between here and Rogers, man. Yeah, I was going to say, the, the, for, for those of you, once again, five-mile high view, uh, there's, been, there, there's really three different thermoclines in Arkansas. There's the south, which is Texarkana, Hope, blah, 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 blah. Central Arkansas, which is Little Rock and Hot Springs. And then the northwest, primarily, which is, and I'm not even going to include Jonesboro because they're a little bit different because they're more flat plains. But Rogers, Springdale, Bentonville, yeah. uh, Fort Fedville, all that area, that is a thermocline. And between there, which it's not that long a drive, between Fedville and uh, uh, Kansas City is another thermocline. It just it gets yeah. a lot colder in Kansas City than it does in Fedville. Uh, and anyway, that's just kind of the basic geology of Arkansas. But my point being, 
we're not geared for it. Just like, and I know you've had this question many times, why don't we have equipment to clear the roads? Well, number one, there's not a lot of clearing to be done when it's ice or solid ice. But number two, we use it two to three days a year, right? I mean, yeah, you know, you're not talking about a climate where, okay, the snow, the snow has begun to fall and we're going to be living like this for 90 to 120 days. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a whole different thing. You know, it'll shut down the entire economy of a Northern city. And so, yeah, they've made the investment in these plows and stuff. It's cost effective. It keeps Mm -hmm. the economy going. It keeps people out and about. Okay. We, we suffer a week where everybody's kind of got to hunker down. Okay. Yeah. It shuts everything down for a week. But it's yeah. not shutting things down for months at a time. No, so no, no. it just doesn't make economic sense to, you know, to do it. Uh, but, yeah, that was your answer to, you know, Miss Wisconsin, and, and right, rightfully so. But, I, I, listen, I don't blame her. You know, we just assume that, well, houses here and houses there. I mean, what's the difference? It's a house. What's, what could be there's, different, There's right? a big difference. So tell well, your story about the Quebecians who oh yeah well I wanted to tell that but I I was going to throw another one out this last snow that we had because it was so bitterly cold that's rare we usually get a snow that's in the 25 to 30 degrees so it's kind of a wet and moist damp snow and that's if we get snow that's if we get well we go years at a time without any snow um Diane's brother a step brother a step half brother lives in Fort Greeley Alaska about 90 miles and I didn't say minutes 90 miles north of Anchorage Okay. Yeah. He's at a military installation there. He's a private contractor. And he said that not this year, but last year, they were really messed up. And this enlightened me greatly. He said, we had our usual, you know, Thanksgiving two feet of snow, right? And then it was 41 degrees and a lot of it melted. And we had an inch and a half of, of ice on the road and nobody went anywhere. No. So in case you're thinking that it's just an Alaska thing or it's a whatever, no, 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 <laughs> no, no, no. That, yeah, it, it, uh, they have problems too. And, and what, But like, like I was saying, they expect it to snow and stay snowed for the mm-hmm. next 120 days or 160 days in their instance. But yeah, Diane and I got off the boat in Cozumel, and I'm going to add this on the radio show here in just a minute. I was actually putting this in. Here's a tourist tip. You get off the boat, they have places that are tourist traps. I even hate the word using the word tourist trap, but it's a tourist trap. And they're nice enough people and the prices are reasonable and yada, 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 yada. You, they're first world prices in a third world or second world country, but still. If you want to know how to get out of a tourist trap, look up and there will be a sign in every place you go that says evacuation. Exanto, salido. It, there's got to be a way to exit in case there's an emergency. And Diane and I just put our heads down and go directly. Oh, amigo, amigo, rent a Jeep, amigo, amigo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Go to the, ex, the, to the extraction point. Walk outside, and you'll have plenty of people to talk to at that point. But at that point, we rented a little Jeep, and uh, Cozumel is kind of football-shaped, basically. And the, the side you come in on is closest to the mainland of Mexico. We always get a, 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 a vehicle of some sort. Last time, we got a moped or a little forerunner. And we drive around the south side, or you can bisect it, but we ran around the south side of the, of the island over to the Atlantic side, as it were. And it's just, you know... Thousands of miles of ocean on that side. Stunning. They've got a nature preserve. It's gorgeous. We go up to a little place called Coconuts. And we stop at Coconuts. We get up, start walking up the little path, and it looks like a paradise. And it's not a super high-end place. But there's a little sticker on one of the light posts, and it says, we're not coming home. So you walk on up, and there's there's two or three little Hispanic guys, and they are literally sleep, sweeping the palm fronds off of the sand so that it's pristine and beautiful. You get up there, there's iguanas, there's a parrot named Tequila, there's this probably 80 to 100 foot bluff that you're looking back down on the water. We sit down, order a couple of beers, we're just going to sit and relax and enjoy the environment a minute. The couple beside us says you want us to take a picture. Sure. Strike up the casual conversation. Where are you from? Quebec. And they take off with your phone or something. And they tell, well, you know, every time, <laughs> yeah. when everybody says, will you take a picture with us, you know, or mm-hmm. for us, I always think, okay, how good is this phone? And can I outrun these people? That's the yeah. question. I mean, yeah. It, the, yeah. you, know, you, can, you don't think that they want a selfie with you? Exactly. What's the deal? <laughs> yeah. Have Sharpie. Yeah. Have Sharpie. Have we'll Sharpie. Tra- we'll travel. Okay. And, and my my one pun, my line I always pull when I pull up my camera is, or their camera is, okay, 
acting like you like each other. Right. And um, anyway, so the, the conversation gets started and they said they're from Quebec. And because I'm thinking in my mind, you know, we got some super cold weather coming in for us. Yeah. Yeah, this is probably a good time of year to get bug out of Quebec, too. Yeah, probably a good time. And he said they hadn't gotten any snow until this coming weekend, where that was going to be. Be the third weekend or second weekend in January. And I said, you haven't got any snow? He said, it's really been super rare, super rare. What Was it in Buffalo? They hadn't had snow in three years? And they were, yeah. And uh, I said, well, look, you know, I just want to compare something real quick. I said, in our walls, we typically put in six inches of, of uh, fiberglass and that's like R19. And then on a ceiling, you might put R26 or something like that. He said, yeah, R90. I said, R90 on the ceilings. He said, yeah. So they, they'll have two feet of insulation. Yeah. You're you like, know. can you even get R90? <laughs> can you I, buy where R90 would you, in Arkansas? Where would you get that? I don't think we have <laughs> yeah, R90. Yeah, R90. Just, yeah. That's a special order item. I'm what sure. What are you doing, Dennis? I'm stuffing R90 in our yeah. four inch buffer. It, yeah. know, they have double walls. They don't put pipes on the outside. Yeah. It's all what you're used to. So that's we right. get on, we get on the boat, we come back, we get trapped crying shame in New Orleans. Yeah. We're all crying for you. And it's like 64 degrees. And I'm looking down, there's an older guy in the pool down here mm-hmm. and we're staying by the way we stayed at Go- copeland towers i love my dear wife and we have a wonderful life and i said read me about al copeland the guy who founded popeyes right yeah, right little did we know he we're in his old office tower yeah okay i have no idea they converted it to a comfort inn it's super nice they got yeah. a heated pool outside it's yeah. great I walk over. The guy is mowing the grass across the street. I'm looking at the the, the door cameras in little in Hot Springs Village, and it's like 12 and snowing, and they're mowing the grass in New Orleans. And uh, unique event, if you know what I mean. But um, but he spots next, you taking his picture. You said he spots me taking his picture. <laughs> And he comes over and I'm thinking he's pissed or something, right? Yeah. He comes over and he goes, "Okay, you can take my picture, but you've got to tell me what it's for." I said, because there's a huddled mass of people in Hot Springs Village, <laughs> Arkansas. And I'm going to put this picture up and I say, meanwhile, in say, in New Orleans. And he just laughed and went, sure, yeah, 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 sure, 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 sure. Yeah. The very next day, the very next day, it got down below 32. New Orleanians are losing their mind. Uh-huh. The the causeway across the uh across the uh the yeah, lake they're, they're emptying train. all the grocery store shelves and everything. Oh else. yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's a oh, yeah. mad dash, yeah. And the lady, the lady uses the word for the next day. Now, this is under, under 30, but she said, it's cold today, but it's going to be bitterly cold tomorrow. It'll be down to 26. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I don't think that Diane's brother thinks 26 is bitterly cold. No. Probably not. No. I've seen, but you're I've in seen New Orleans see- for a reason, and you're in... Alaska, probably for a reason. Yeah, but for a job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the money. You're or to get away. Or to get away. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, but I'll, it's the, the difference between you and I've talked about this from Dallas Fort Worth because we can get weather there and we typically, mm-hmm. it's very close to here, but there's a huge difference. And the difference is water, the difference is rain. You mentioned the temperature, that. The temperature difference can be. It can be something as subtle as just a few degrees, or it could be five or ten degrees. But it's interesting to me, just because of because we're east of DFW, mm-hmm. you know, the rain, this rain that we've got today while we're recording, it was it was in Texas yesterday, about twelve and, hours ago. And, yeah, and it's here today. It's a tad colder here today than it is there, um, but the difference is the rain and the and the and the this rain started i don't know did this rain start 20 hours ago oh yeah and we're not done no not it done. is not stopped and it's not going to stop until late tomorrow and that's what kind of very, gutters very, have you got on your house randy massive ones. <laughs> <laughs> i tell dennis so my son's a home inspector he does he's got his own business in DFW, and a great so, one by the way not so just he, a home he, inspector he he's comes great. he comes over and well he's entertaining on tiktok at least <laughs> so he comes over and He's high on gutters, and the house didn't have it, it. It had minimal gutters, and he said, "Yeah, you really, you really ought to invest in gutters." So, you know, so I did, and they came out and they put, you know, and these are like six inch gutters. Why? No, whoa, whoa, whoa. You do you mind sharing the price? Rough price? I mean, rough. That's a couple thousand dollars. But uh, gutters all the way around a brand new. Yeah, it was, uh, the, the price was the house. price was right. 
Uh, mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, yeah, you you do that. You, you jump on that. Do that. So I did it. But, you know, I don't know what I'm looking at. And I'm like, these, I mean, they seem big. And, well, they are big. I'm like, well, how big are those gutters? <laughs> how big a boy are you? <laughs> and they're like, they're, they're six-inch gutters. Well, you're not going to find anybody in DFW that's got six-inch gutters. It doesn't rain like that, huh? No, we don't get this kind of water, you know, really? and it doesn't just, no. I mean, you'll get a torrential downpour, but, and you'll get a day that it might drizzle off and on a lot for a day. But here, it just comes and it just camps. But yeah. come on, there's, there's a reason that the trees are three times as tall, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. so yeah. it's just... There's a difference, but it's also what drove us to come over here. I wanted a different topography. I wanted to see something different than you can see at Dallas-Fort Worth, and that's going to come with some climate differences. And so we're not in Wisconsin anymore. Sorry. But but back up. Let's back up just a second. Back during the summer, uh, you know, I, I, you weren't here for a few weeks, and I would go over and look at things and take care yep. of whatever. Yep. And your thermostat, as a rule, I was watching, <clears throat> it was usually between – at least six degrees cooler here and most times closer to 10 degrees cooler here. Oh yeah. It, it, yeah. It was significantly way cooler. more comfortable here. Yeah. Well, because we've got trees blocking the ground and we don't cook the earth. You exactly. Know? Well, you we're not surrounded by concrete here. No, well, that's true too. And, that. and for what it's worth this, uh, this, not this time last year, but in the spring of last year, at president of the town homeowners association, I have different hats that I wear. And we were talking to one of the uh, weed prevention people that weren't, seeming to perform correctly in our minds. And one of the points that came up that was an extenuating circumstance, but in, in, I think it was late March, early April, we had had uh, Arkansas typically will get between 55 and 65 inches of rain a year, sometimes as many as 75. And uh, (laughs) I forgot, I forgot Brad Beaumont. That is a great Mm -hmm. fan of the show lives over here on the golf course. He's a super fan. He is moved here, bought a house, bought another house, bought another house, bought another house for all what his house cost him in California. Let that sink in, people. Yeah. But uh, Brad sent me a message. He asked about snow. He said, does it ever snow? I said, eh, once every 10 years or something, we'll get a good ray of snow or whatever. The year he moves here, we get 12 inches, you know. But but he asked one day, he said, 60 inches of rain? Does, it, does the sun ever shine? I'm like... Hmm. Yeah. Good question. It shines a lot. It just rains a lot when it rains, but your point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not Pacific, it, you know, it's not Pacific Northwest, uh, kind of, kind of climate, but yeah, I mean, this rain that we got right now is just camped out. No, you're not going to, it's not going to just sit and drizzle and drizzle and drizzle for three days straight, typically yeah. in a place like DFW. And so, you know, the rain, it can be a problem if you don't have proper drainage. Six inch gutters. Yeah. Well, if you don't have six inch gutters <laughs> and proper drainage, you know, you might you might end up with some water. So yeah, there's all that stuff is just come on, it's just humans it's humans doing what we have to do for where we where we are. And so yeah. the construction methods are they're very different than they are. I mean, you can go five hundred miles, three hundred miles north of us, and they're gonna be different. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I was, I was going to, the note I was going to make when I was joking about Brad and the rain, uh, was that at that time when we met with the weed, the weed control expert, we were 40 inches above average four zero above average. Now yeah. we didn't, fl- we did flatten back out. And last year was a, uh, not a record breaking year for rain, but it was still a heavy year for rain, but we had a deluge uh, in the early spring. Yeah, you go to spray your weeds, and and I got to tell you, when you have an extra forty inches of rain, everything grows, everything yeah. mushrooms on your fire logs. Yeah, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> everything. Yeah, it's funny how that works. Well, I was visiting with somebody from Florida that was asking about about hmm. the village and you yeah. know native Floridians, and of course down there you have you have hurricanes, and so cinder block houses is mm-hmm. kind of the methodology. Yeah, sure. You know, you don't see it's not it's not the sticks and bricks like we not have. Not vinyl siding. No, not vinyl you know, siding. I mean it's it's everything is. I mean it's cinder block, is the structure where it's it's lumber, here, and they were kind of baffled by that. Like you know, I mean it didn't make, like why wouldn't everybody use cinder? I'm like, well, because we're not. 
battling hurricanes here, mm. you know, and tornadoes. That's a whole different, that's a whole different topic, but yeah, you know, so it's just different. It's just different. It's just what you're, it's what you're used to. So yeah, if it's going to freeze, probably smart to follow the, the let local water advice drip. and let the water yeah. drip. And we're not talking yeah. about just turning on full blast or anything, just as long as it's moving. So it, it mm -hmm. won't freeze. Well, you had a scare when you got back from your trip. I did. Uh, we had been gone mm, three weeks, two yep. and a half weeks, two and three quarter yep. weeks. And our staff, who staff, our people who help us with our Airbnb rentals and all that, they had taken fantastic care of us. Opened the doors under the cabinets underneath for the plumbing, which is a good idea, too. I've seen people, Randy, and for what it's worth, I've seen people that have dripped their faucet. Their HVAC fails, and we talk about heat mm -hmm. pumps in a second, but it fails and it gets super cold in the house and the water keeps dripping and the drain faucet freezes up yep, and the water just pours out under your house. So keep those doors open. You know, that's the yeah. deal. But we came in, turned on the faucet, and I was like, well, there's no water coming out. And, I, you know, I know that Cody, I know Cody made a good stream in several places and opened the right. doors and blah, 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 blah. And then it dawned on me a good stream at whatever time of the day he turned it on and then 8,000 other people turn theirs on, then yeah. mine might slow to a drip. Yeah. It affects and your then water it comes pressure. Back. Exactly. So you don't know how much it's something you kind of need to monitor. We came in and turned the faucet and there was no water. And I was like, Oh dear Lord. And the faucet went, shh, shh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, yeah. Jesus. Because it, it had, it was just beginning to freeze. And isn't the time for the heat pump story, Randy? Yeah. Yeah. Because people don't understand that either, especially people in, in northern, you know, more air, more uh, Arctic climates. Well, I meant yeah. to mention the guy in Quebec, would I ask? I was mm -hmm. like, you know, if you've got R90 and it's 20 below or zero or whatever, you know, it's just zero degrees, you know, a warm day, a balmy day, you know, yep. well, how do you heat? Do y'all use? Uh, diesel fuel or the fuel oil that I hear tell about or whatever, because yep. I've never, I have right. never physically <clears throat> seen one of these in my life. And what did he say? He said, we use natural gas. Yeah. I'm right. like, well, cool. I mean, that's, but we don't have natural gas in the village. We have heat pumps yeah. and heat pumps are basically air conditioners that will work in reverse. Yep. So, I mean, let's face it. Of, of all the things, if you had to give up one thing, you probably would want to have heat, but Air conditioning is pretty premium here too, you know. Yeah, Mister Quebec, he doesn't even have air conditioning. You know, he may not. He may. Oh, not. I guarantee he doesn't. I guarantee <laughs> Diana, he doesn't. He doesn't Diana, need it. Diane and I went and stayed at a uh, a uh, ski lodge outside of uh, of uh, Denver nine years ago or something, and there was a guy from Missouri that checked us in. Super nice guy, and uh, I, I I came back and I said, Hey, Joe, where, where's where's the air conditioner on the, cause it was like early June, you know, where's the dial for the air conditioner? He said, no, 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 we don't have that. He said, but you're okay. You're on the second floor. So you can sleep with your windows open. I'm like second floor. See crime. Then again, I'm not thinking crime minded. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, but he said, well, you just sleep with your windows open. And okay. Sound like a good idea. We crack the window open. It's a little cool, a little warm, a little uncomfortable. It, it, it's warmer than it would usually be, you know? Right. And Diane and I wake up the next morning and look like we have both been in a slug fest. <laughs> Our <laughs> eyes are swollen, nearly <laughs> shut up. I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. Our nose is huge and yeah. red. Apparently they have different cedar pollens in, in <laughs> yeah. Denver yeah. than do they do have, in Arkansas. Do we have photographic, do we have photographic evidence of this? I'm not going to share that information, Randy. As good a friend as you are, I'm not sure. And that I'd sure like I can to either confirm it. nor deny. But <laughs> yeah. my point being, uh, you can't. And even in that weather, heat pumps work inside a window. And, yeah. and that is, you know, you, you talked about this earlier. But, you know, if it's 105 degrees outside. The differential between Freon and its expansion is about 40 to 50 degrees. If it's 105 mm -hmm. outside and you want to keep it 60 in your house, you need ammonia, like yeah. a commercial chiller yeah. at, a, good at luck. a movie theater. Yeah, good right. luck. Because the, the heat pump doesn't work in that environment. It doesn't work outside that parameter. It will only keep your house about 30 to 40 degrees cooler than you know what it is. On the other hand, <laughs> it, you can only, when the heat pump reverses, 
it actually tries to take heat out of the outside temperature. Well, that works till about 20 to 25. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't and work then there's when it's no 8 heat. degrees. <laughs> it doesn't work when there's no heat outside. No. So the little strips keep on. Some people call it emergency heat or whatever, strip right. heating. Right. And then that little that little meter outside starts doing the whole top thing. And uh, you could, you know, look a little stroboscope to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, and that's when you so, get on social media and you, you tell everybody, my house is cold and my my utility bill is still going to be five hundred dollars because like, people on social media can help you randy yeah yeah so <laughs> i listen i get it but you know you i don't know i mean it's first world problems you know it is I'm, a first world problem i, I told well, ray and, shaw who i have alluded to earlier about you know coming from the north northwest and you know he's he's <clears throat> he's a 60 year old guy you know he's a marine I uh, lived in Ar lived in Arkansas, lived in Alaska, you know, for a period of time. And, and of course, it, it's just the perspective that you get from people that aren't True. here or people that yeah. aren't from this part of the world. I mean, at least I'm from this part, of, kind of sort of this part of the yeah. world. No, no, no. You're from the region. Yeah. You know, so I, I understand, you know, the region, but it's it's the, the perspective of, you know, like we're going to lose our mind, our trap. I haven't had my trash picked up in a week. It's like, I'm just going to absolutely lose my mind. You know, my utility bill is going to spike, you know, for this, this month, which I understand. Listen, people on fixed incomes, I get it. I'm, I'm sympathetic. I'm empathetic sure. to it, but sure, sure. I told him, I said, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty content. I'm pretty content. Of course, being the introverts that we are, people were just going crazy. Dennis texted me, you know, did I have cabin fever? And I said, I have never cabin fever you can, zero I be, cabin no fever. i could be listen i could be if i had heat i could survive alaska <laughs> if i could be inside and stay warm it's fine it's i, I could so, be fine but people like so, you uh, it, would, it would drive you crazy and i get it uh, no i've got i've got social media i'm good i have healthy interactions <laughs> yeah, as long as you've got facebook you're good yeah, and as long as as long as I'm not pissing people off, which you know apparently <laughs> yeah, well, is my, I think that's my superpower, Randy. I think that is my superpower. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I put a, I put a post on this last week. I said, you know, hey, I'm, my jokes are funnier if you pretend I'm somebody you like. You know, <laughs> right. and a, a couple of great. I'll have Ron to like, make you a cape. I'll have I'll have Ron <laughs> make you a cape for your superpower. Oh, but man. I had I had a couple of friends and they were like, oh, somebody that doesn't like Dennis. I'm like, you know, you don't know the people I know. I, I know yeah. some people you don't. Yeah, I know. I know a lot more people than you know. <laughs> well, I got to um, tell you, uh, Diane's brother put a great one up. Now, this is Fort Greeley, Alaska. OK, Steve yeah. Lemons, this is for you. It sounds cold already. <laughs> it does. Oh, my Lord. Well, you know, and he, he, I love talking with him because he works in the construction They're They're actually building. It's not it's not. Uh, it's not a uh, uh, top secret or anything. They literally have, for lack of a better term, spears, spears mounted in the ground in a concrete receptacle. If somebody shoots a missile over, we shoot a spear at it. It's it's dumb. It's not a smart spear. It 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 doesn't take. And the reason I say it's not not rocket science. I mean, it's not high secret. What's the super secret about shooting a spear at a missile? You know, it's no big deal. But he would say that they that, have that, does, that doesn't sound effective to me. It doesn't. And no, we I'm, have I'm to highly simplify it. <laughs> we have to highly simplify yeah, it. We have to <laughs> miss something really important. Here. We're, we're, well, they're shooting missiles and we're shooting spears. I don't. Uh, well, no, we hit you. Like we hit you. I feel like we're on the losing end of that battle. <laughs> what are you in charge of? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm in yeah. charge of throwing spears. Yeah, you shoot the a missiles. missile, well, I've got a spear. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Okay, it's, it, as it's been you. explained to me, as it's been explained to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wait, wait, two things. <laughs> Two things he said when they get a construction, oh. when they get a... <laughs> he's building these spears. We may have to pause, people. We no, <laughs> we're not. No, it's all going. It's all being recorded. It's all rolling. No, he said that. Well, you've just they... made him sound like he's got a really great job. <laughs> he's in Alaska building in the spears. frozen north, throwing spears at missiles. Well, well and, they and haven't they're... had to fire him, Randy, so it's good. It, and it's they're been in, safe so and they're far. in concrete. I'm like, well, just. <laughs> Yeah, you might not want to put those in concrete if you're going to have to not. launch them. Well, no, no, no. That, that's where they launch them <laughs> yeah, from. Yeah, I, mean, I get it. I get oversimplified, it. right? Yeah, no, but, terribly but the, oversimplified. The, but but two points I wanted to make. 
because it's so far north. <clears throat> when they get a contract that would take, say, three months or five months to do a project, they typically double or triple that. Sure. So if, if it takes six months to build a yeah. road here, right. they allocate a year or a year and a half because they just don't have that many working days. Right. But he, he put a post up this last week. And uh, Steve Lemons, y'all are welcome to follow him. He's a fantastic guy. I love him like a brother. Um, but he put up a post the other day. And it said, it said, lower 48, bitterly cold, life-threatening weather. Alaskans, you're going to need your big coat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that, and I think that describes the ratio that we're talking about. I mean, right. it, it, you know, yeah, it's, it's just it's, it's what you're used to. It, yeah, and it's funny what people make fun of too. You know, with all of this, well, the lower twenties are bitterly cold in New Orleans. You know, yeah. That's oh bitter. yeah, yeah. It's twenty six. It's going to be which, bitterly cold. I I thought when when it was like you know three or four or five or six here, I thought that's bitterly. That's my envisionment of bitterly. But yeah, listen, when it's cold enough that you know the, it's cold enough that the crawfish are not moving real quickly, then it's cold. <laughs> It's cold in New Orleans. I can't believe you said that because one of the things we were watching the local weather and they were like, yeah, this freeze is going to affect the crawfish harvest. I'm like, you harvest crawfish? Really? Oh, yeah. And I it guess does, they, too. They get it to the does. table somehow, right? Well, you said yeah. you lived you lived for a while in Red Stick. Is that right? Bathon yeah. Beach? Yeah. Better part of a decade. Yeah. Better really? part of a decade in southern Louisiana. Yeah. I, there's parts about it that, you know, I, yeah, I absolutely love. But you know, and there's a reason that you can see houses down there that are that are that are built way up. You know, steps, and there's yeah. still new houses down there that are built on on pier and beam construction. That in this part of the country, you're like, well, it's an old house. Mm -hmm. You know, if they if they don't build it on a foundation in our neck of the woods, it's an old house, and you can find new houses down there built on pier and beam because they're you know they're they're up off the ground because the ground you know they get a lot of water. Down in New Orleans. Yeah, they claim yeah, it rains yeah. in New Orleans, metropolitan area, somewhere every single day of the year. Really? Mm -hmm. I can kind of see that. I can kind of see that. And more people that. disappear from the city of New Orleans than any city in the world. Really? And by the way, we're out at the ocean. We're in Cozumel. We're in Belize. We're in Honduras. Uh, and now man, you're just bragging. I, well, no, I'm just saying we're, we're way out in the ocean. <laughs> yeah. Way out in the ocean. And my sinuses didn't bother me one moment. Funny we get works. back to New Orleans, and there is tr cotton tree, cottonwood tree yeah. pollen everywhere. There's a little cottonwood falling. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, well, I told you when when we got to New Orleans, it was a 65 degree day, and Diane yeah. said, "Why don't we put the pop down on the Mercedes?" And we're driving around the cemetery, and I look up, and there's this little cloud of fog, a little cloud of little white. Yeah. Oh my God, that's cottonwood. I'm really allergic to cottonwood. Yeah. And yeah that and all of a sudden, your eyes. Were, Swole shut and yeah, yeah another you picture like, you may want to you, see. You look like you did when you slept in Denver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We we had a learning moment there outside Denver that uh, yeah. Yeah. And Diane had never been to a cheesecake factory. So we go to a cheesecake factory and it's wonderful, you know, in in, in Denver. And then we yeah. drive about an hour west and stay in this little ski resort in the front range, as they call it, or whatever. And it was really nice. Uh and then I looked up the next morning and I had left my credit card in Denver at the Cheesecake Factory, to which Diane, she's a terrible liar and actress. And she was like, oh, darn, we'll have to go back to Cheesecake Factory. Oh, yeah, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, good strategy on your part. Good strategy, good strategy. Yeah, well, I guess there's the best a whole lot more that we could talk about, but we're not experts. But anyway, no. it was a good conversation. I had a few good laughs about it, so... <laughs> It was worth fit. that. Yeah, it was worth that. Well, listen, you know my moniker. Hey, I, I I believe in that. That oh, who was the uh, Jimmy Valvano? You know, if you if just Google the Google the Jimmy, yeah, Google the Jimmy V speech. So one of the first you know SBs or something. He gives this speech. He's got terminal whatever. Mm -hmm. He's he's gonna die, and he's giving. And it's a great speech. It's a great great speech. Uh, fame basketball coach, and they've now got the Jimmy V Foundation. But in that hmm. speech, one of the things that he says, you know, he talks about laugh every day and cry every day. And I can tell you, I absolutely, I don't do it because he said it. I've always done it. Uh, there's not a day goes by that I don't cry. There's not a day goes by that I don't that I don't laugh. So 
Yeah, I got, I got, a, I got a few good laughs out of this one. But yeah, Google that speech and and go. I watch will. It. It's great. I will, and and, and I, I will say, I will say, a life, a, a lot of people, um, a lot of people like to just say, well, I don't want to have that emotion, and I don't want to have this emotion. I'll just squash this together. You're missing the joys of life. You really are. I mean, I, I think that's the, 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 the wideness and the variety and the, the, the depth of it. Right. And yeah. you don't always cry cause you're, cause you're sad, you know, you can cry cause no. I'm pretty funny about yeah. putting concrete rods in the ground. Yeah. Well, I did. I cried and laughed at the same time. So that's how I roll. Say good night, Dennis. <laughs> good night, Dennis. Great seeing y'all again. Thanks for watching and listening to Hot Springs Village Inside Out, a weekly podcast starring Hot Springs Village, Arkansas. Visit the website at hotspringsvillageinsideout.com.